Hi, everyone. I'm glad you're here to join in our conversations with the Philippines' top industry leaders. It's time to pick their brilliant minds and see what makes them tick. Get ready to take down some notes as we talk about business, life, and everything in between. This is Clockwork. Today, we'll meet the man behind one of the Philippines' top shopping apps, the person who helps make adding to cart easy for you and me. When it makes us sometimes question our very own judgments. Why? Why did I add to cart? When will I ever use this? What was I thinking? We'll find out more. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Mr. Ray Alimurong. Thank you, Edu. Good morning, and good morning to everyone watching today. Thank you very much for joining us. Okay, if you don't mind, let's dive straight into it. I mean, as the head of the biggest e-commerce platform in the Philippines, do you do a lot of online shopping yourself? And if you do, what do you normally buy? Yes, I uh, definitely, we, I, eat, I eat my own dog food, and a lot of my online shopping happens on the side. I am now becoming pretty much an expert on floor cleaners, <laughs> disinfectants, uh, I buy a lot of groceries uh, online, as well as personal care. It's just so convenient that it's completely changed my buying behavior. Well, first question, and already we have so much in common. <laughs> Good to hear. I hope, uh, I hope that a lot of your shopping is also on Lazada. Oh, definitely, with a capital L. <laughs> but I have to ask, you know, in your line of business, I mean, what is the most important trait as a CEO that you must possess to maybe, say, better lead your team to success? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to think that there are different leaders and different styles. And I, I, can, I believe I can only talk about what works for me. For me, I really believe that a CEO or a leader must be able to set a very clear, simple, and consistent strategic long-term vision. Uh, it, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Okay. Thank you, that's from a business standpoint. But I guess people will also be curious to find out more about you from a personal standpoint. So these are some very thought-provoking questions. I'll have to begin. What's the first thing you do in the morning? Uh, the first thing I do is uh, check my schedule. Uh, <laughs> I have an assistant who helps me manage my day, my, my week, actually my life. I try to book meetings in 30-minute increments uh, and, you know, I, ideally maximum 45. Uh, if you force a little, little bit more focus in your day, uh, you actually get a lot more done in your days. Are you a coffee or tea kind of guy? Definitely coffee. Business casual attire? Well, you know, in a tech startup, uh, definitely it's casual. I also promised myself after one internship where I was wearing a suit, I would never take another job where I had to wear a necktie. What was the biggest challenge you faced on your way to becoming a, uh, a leader in the e-commerce industry? You know, I would say that the biggest challenge I faced was that I realized in building Lazada, we were not just building a company. We realized that uh, we were building several industries at the same time. You know, I'm talking about e-commerce, logistics, payments. It was actually impossible to build only e-commerce. Uh, let me contrast this with the US, no? where people had been entering their credit cards on paper, uh, uh, in catalogs. They had been doing that for years before e-commerce started. And in the Philippines, the logistics industry was basically in its infancy. The ability to receive payment, uh, prepayment or digital payment was also very, very limited. Well, Mr. Alimurong, you spoke about infancy. You know now, uh, how many years down the road, you just celebrated your uh, ninth birthday, uh, right. the company, so to speak. But after nine years, can you still say that uh, the whole concept is still in its infancy and there's so much more to look forward to? You know, e-commerce is still less than 5% of retail in the Philippines. You know, we're still at a stage where people tell people, tell their friends and families about their purchases online. 
When we get to a point where it's no longer news, when no one is talking about it, then we know it's ubiquitous. When you first went to school, what did you want to be? Ever since I was a child, I've only wanted to do two things. I wanted to help people and create. And many people don't know that I actually started my, my, my career as a medical doctor because I wanted to help people. And there's a story to that. And if you, if you, you don't mind, I'll, I'd like to share it. Please. Um, you know, my, my grandfather was a heart doctor and he was one of the pioneers of Philippine medicine. He was one of the co-founders of Makati Medical Center. And he, I really idolized him. And my desire to help people was actually seeded by him. And I can still remember stories where he would offer his services for free to patients on weekends. Um, so I trained for five years at PGH, the largest charity hospital. And I can still remember being frustrated by the sheer poverty. And I felt that no matter how many people we help, tomorrow would look just like today. Uh, and that we were merely running in place. But you know, Edu, the world was changing. The year was 1999, and there was this groundbreaking technology developing around us called the internet. And I became captivated with its possibilities and potential, that it could one day catalyze development in Philippines in, in, in a much broader way. Uh, rather than helping one patient at a time that you get to do as a clinician, I saw an opportunity to impact Filipinos on a national scale. And so I quit medicine, and I went back to school. I went to business school in Silicon Valley, spent four years in Amazon because I wanted to learn about this thing called e-commerce. And I got that chance in 2012 when I received a call from an e-commerce startup in the Philippines called Lazada. You know, I have to ask you this. In my family, my father always said, I want one to be a doctor. Exactly. <laughs> one to be a lawyer uh, and one to be a priest Are or you? a soldier. <laughs> Are you sure we're not from the same family? Because that sounds exactly like a conversation I would hear over the dinner table. Oh yeah, that's exactly how, you know, I'm sorry to say I disappointed my dad in a couple. But uh, that's why my question to you is, how did your family, are we talking about a Dr. Benjamin Aliburong? Yes, my, uh, that's my uncle. Okay, yeah, yeah, that, I know some and of them. My father is a lawyer. So there you go, the doctor and the lawyer. No, we're not talking about Vic Aliburong. <laughs> yes. Oh, really? Get out of here. Okay. No, I know them both. Yeah. Okay. Small world. No, but how did your family feel about your change of heart? That was a very interesting conversation. But he, when, when I left medicine, I was so sure that there really was no more discussion. And at that point, you know, I, the, I think everyone was thinking, hey, you know what? Let him do what he wants. Anyway, he can always go back to being a doctor. No, no, that's really, really interesting. Uh, you know, because normally, like I feel it in a Filipino culture, the first thing is the mother shouting to the neighbors, Doctor na anako! Doctor na anako! You know, it's a really big deal. When you first took the wheel of uh, Lazada, what did you uh, want to change if there was any? And uh, what goals did you set? And how did you strategize towards that end? You know, Lazada has went through a lot of changes. Uh, as, as you may know, we were founded by a, a German incubator called Rocket Internet um, in 2012. And then in 2016, there was an acquisition with, uh, by Alibaba. Today, I want to move Lazada towards uh, being the most relevant and trusted platform, the e-commerce platform in the field. Uh, what we're trying to do now is enable all the sellers that want to sell on Lazada to be able to onboard. Uh, and then, of course, when you come on the platform, it should be easy to find what you're looking for, right? Um, this is a, partly our search algorithm, uh, which creates personalization such that both search and discovery are tailored to the customer. You uh, put forth these goals. You created the mindset for the company. Right. But then again, here comes COVID-19. Here comes the pandemic nobody ever imagined it would happen. How did you pivot the company now to be able to become and stay relevant during these times? During COVID, the priorities for Lazada did not really change. No? The mission of Lazada is to accelerate progress in Southeast Asia. Um, and how do we accelerate progress? We do it by empowering Filipino consumers to find what they're looking for online, but also to empower businesses. MSMEs and brands to go online and grow online. 
For instance, for the consumers, we expanded our product assortment during COVID to cater to their needs. We continue to give them their essentials for online grocery called LASMAR to enable consumers to buy fresh and frozen foods like meat, fish, vegetables, even ice cream. We launched Lazada Med to enable consumers to buy non-prescription medicines like vitamins, supplements, and other health essentials. In many ways, you're creating an inclusive economy. You know, now that's going to have to parallel with the development of technology. Uh, how much of uh, Lazada resources are you throwing back into the development and expansion of technology? Actually, technology is at the core of what we do at Lazada. The ability of sellers to manage their business online is something completely powered by technology. Today, a seller can go and actually sign up on their own, upload documents, do this all probably within 10 minutes, five to 10 minutes. They can do this at midnight without talking to a human being. Again, I wasn't kidding when I say I do a lot of shopping now, but I've always been using the uh, cash on delivery because there's still that fear in me that sometimes there might be a breach and uh, my privacy data might end up falling in the wrong hands. How are you addressing that? Because I still notice a lot of my friends too are doing a lot of the cash on delivery. Yeah, actually, guilty as charged because we are the ones who started cash on delivery. Okay. Uh, and now we're, okay. trying to put the, we're trying to put that back in the box. No? Uh, and the reason for that is because cash on delivery did address the, initial, the early years uh, trust concerns of Filipinos. Uh, and then from the perspective of Lazada, cash, cash is actually expensive, more expensive than digital payments. The main reason is that a cash on delivery order tends to fail 15 times more frequently than a non-COD order. And it fails because the customer, you know, doesn't have the cash on hand or yeah. change their mind, right? To build trust, it's more than just payments. For us, trust is wider than that. Number one, we need to have very good seller and product ratings and reviews. That should be very visible to the customer. Today it's there, but we want to improve how easy it is to understand it and make it more visible. Okay, so you just you just slapped me in the hand and told me stop doing cash on delivery. <laughs> okay. If you don't mind sharing your projections for business in general, uh, not just uh, MSMEs, but for even the bigger companies. What I would say to big companies, big brands, is uh, you need to have a digital strategy. A larger and larger share of media consumption of uh, the average Filipino has moved online. So you need to be where the consumer is, right? Uh, I'd like to emphasize that e-commerce is a business model. It's yeah. not an additional sales channel. <laughs> Correct. There is an opportunity to engage customers with high-touch, real-time activities online. Uh, you, you need to invest maybe on high traffic channels like Facebook and Google, but also there are opportunities to invest uh, in Lazada itself. Um, and then of course, right important to invest in store management and operations. You know, if you were to open a store in the mall, you would get a store manager, would you not? So then why is it that on Lazada, you are trying to do it one-tenth of your time as the owner? Why don't you get a store manager? Right? So this right. is kind of the message to business. You need to invest. Thank you very much. Very informative. But I have to ask you, I'm sure you've had your own little missteps along the way. Of course, uh, like with any other big business uh, trying to do, trying to make a huge impact, definitely we've had those missteps. Uh, and, you know, Edu, let me share you how, how we think about it. Lazada, as a, as a company, Lazada is very willing to do experiments. And, you know, if it doesn't work out, we'll reverse it, right? Move on, man. Uh, and an, another thing is that um, this experimenting is what allowed us to build the Lazada marketplace of sellers. Right? Remember, Lazada started out as a retailer. Right? Everything we sold was in our warehouse, whether we owned it, out re outright retail purchase, or consignment. Right? But we knew that we couldn't scale and address the needs of all the consumers and all the MSMEs if we were confined to a retail. We had to build a marketplace, and that was also another experiment. Now, of course, there are experiments that didn't go so well. No? Uh, I'm reminded of what uh, a quote from uh, Thomas Edison, where he said, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that, uh, that don't work. <laughs> well, you know, speaking about Thomas Edison, this shines a light on your leadership style. 
you have to be able to establish that sense of trust, you know, for them to be able to think independently. Uh, I think one of the foundations of my leadership is that I treat people, everyone with respect. Obviously, sometimes there's a belief that it's easier to get something done or to get results if you yell at people. You do an emotional outburst. But actually, what, what that does is it, uh, you really destroy the morale of the employee. Maybe they go start fixing their LinkedIn profile. <laughs> I believe in a meritocratic form of leadership, right? I, I truly believe that the CEO and senior management do not have a monopoly on good ideas. Right. And the only way we're going to hear everyone else's ideas is to cultivate an environment which they are willing to share. Okay, you have to learn how to deal with pressure. You know, I happen to know your wife also deals with a lot of pressure. Okay, so, I mean, from the office, undoubtedly you have your pressures. When you get home, of course, it's either it's not yours, your wife would have to share. So how do you deal with pressure? It's interesting you bring up my wife because um, some say that I, we have probably one of the most stressful households in Metro Manila. My point? <laughs> with, you know, uh, with her running the largest city in the Philippines and me running a very mm -hmm. large commerce platform. No? You, when you talk about pressure, it's lonely being CEO. Uh, it's lonely being the leader. You know, I bring up the concept of trade-offs. It's impossible to make everyone happy. That's why it's very lonely. You, you make one guy happy, the other guy is angry, right? And I really believe that I need to have a pressure release valve. That release valve is everyone around me. I need to release that pressure to my team. Okay? I'm not saying I need to pass the work. I need to share my vision and the challenges that I face so that people know where we want to go and can collaborate in getting us there. During this, uh, these challenging times, you know, uh, people have been left with a lot of time to uh, shop around, myself included. I found this uh, handheld vacuum cleaner with ultraviolet sterilization. I mean, I thought it was fantastic. And I have a small little farm in Batangas where, of course, I've become a, what, somewhat of a, uh, a gardener. And I hope you don't mind, but I wasn't lying to you. Can I show you? Sure, sure. <laughs> it's, look at it. Wow, that is a very nice uh, gadget. Great, great design, very effective. It's got a three-meter cord. I'm sounding like the spokesperson or the endorser, but I'm not. And then uh, I told you I've been doing a little bit of gardening, you know, so... Actually, uh, the sellers of those are watching because they might suddenly see a spike in their sales because of your uh, your testimonial. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, these are products that, you know, they're actually working for me and coming in really handy. But I even bought things like these little life gear glow sticks. <laughs> what, what, middle of the night, you hear a noise, you go out, glow sticks work. So, you know, it's been uh, terribly interesting. What what would you think was your, the best thing that you purchased That's on Lazada? Uh, I think uh, one of the best uh, purchases I ever made on Lazada is an uh, electric scooter. Okay. Yeah, so similar to your, uh, your vacuum. I have a question. Has anything ever been delivered to you and you were disappointed? So yes, I actually have been a user of our online return system and I'm actually uh, I'm very happy with it. It's pretty efficient. And not because you're Ray Alimurong. No, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the uh, challenges that consumers have on Lazada when they need to return something is that they actually don't file a return. They go to social media or maybe start bugging the seller and I tell them, have you tried to file a return? Oh, okay. Uh, wait, you know what? Let me try that. And when they do, they realize it's actually pretty easy. Um, you know, I, at this point, I've taken a lot of your time and uh, I would like to say thank you very much for spending time with us. You know, as a uh, token of our gratitude, we prepared a, uh, a special gift for you. Actually, it's literally uh, behind my back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's it. Right here. Yeah, I did the ribbon myself. Oh my gosh. So, uh, we know you like juices. You know, you seem to be a very, very healthy guy. Oh, this is, these are actually my favorite. Are you serious? Yes. Okay, but if you look uh, underneath the juices, we have another special gift. Found out that you're a voracious reader. 
So we got you a print of a painting by award-winning children's book author wow, and beautiful. artist Cora Dandan Albano. And it's called uh, Duyan Aklat at Manga. Thank you very much. Thank you to uh, thank you Edu and also to Globe Business for this. Yeah, yeah. No, thank you very much. Uh, you know, it was great having you on board, and I'm sure that you've uh, helped educate, inspire a lot of Filipinos uh, out there. You know, those who maybe have had uh, earlier reluctances about becoming entrepreneurs or engaging in MSMEs. You've shown them that, uh, you know, there's a bigger world out there and you've given them a greater picture of what they can look forward to. So, Mr. Ray Aliborong, CEO, Lazada Philippines, thank you very, very much. Thank you very much, Edu. It was a pleasure. And thank you also to Globe Business Club for, for this opportunity. Well, that's the end of our shift. But tune in again next time as we put the spotlight on another inspiring industry leader. Uh, who knows, our next guest may just be the inspiration you need to soar even higher. So be sure to watch out for our next episodes dropping every month on YouTube and on Spotify. The clock is always ticking and every second counts. I'm Edu Bansado and this is Clockwork. <laughs>